Hello, welcome to uh, New Macedonia Baptist Church in Newport, Kentucky's Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, I'm Pastor Randall Baker, and tonight we'll be on Exodus chapter 31. And as usual, we will read the whole chapter and then go back over and, and try to talk about it one verse at a time. Today is a shorter chapter, so we won't be uh, that long probably on it. Let's go ahead and work, open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this 31st chapter, just as we thank you for all the Bible, Lord. We just thank you for preserving it, blessing, be with us, Lord, in all things. We just ask you to increase our knowledge of it, if it be your will. And, of course, we ask that your will be done in all things. We just ask that you'd look over all of our old folks and, and sick and all of our con congregation, Lord, and, and bless us and all those that are trying to serve you all over the world. And we thank you for it. We ask you to continue to be with us, guide and direct us, and we'll give you all the glory in Jesus name we do pray and amen as usual I will remind you that uh, you can send in your donations your offerings your tithes whatever you would, would like to give to the church uh, to P.O. Box 151 uh, Alexandria Kentucky 41001 and if you would like uh, something specialized like going to the ladies club or the missions or uh, uh, the building fund or anything like that mark it uh, as such and we'll thank you for it. Thank you for what you've given so far. And we ask you to just continue to support the church if you're able to. If you're not able to, we can certainly understand that too. And you're certainly welcome to watch any videos or come to the church anytime if you're not able to give. We don't uh, expect you to give when you're not able. And we'll thank you for what you can. In Jesus' name, we do, we do ask all things. And thank you. Uh, uh, Exodus chapter 31. Verse 1 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Beelzeleel, the son of Uriah, Uriah, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship, to devise cunning works, to, do, to work in gold and in silver and in brass and in cutting st of stones to set them and in carving of timber to work in all manners of workmanship. And I, behold, I have given with him Aholiab, the son of Ahisamach of the tribe of Dan. And in the hearts of all that are wise hearted, I have put wisdom that they may make all that I have committed the commanded thee. The tabernacle of the congregation and the ark of the testimony and the mercy seat that is there upon and all the furniture of the tabernacle, and the table, and his furniture, and the pure candlestick, with all his furniture, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering, with all his furniture, and the labor in his foot, and the cloths of service, and the holy garments of, uh, for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons, to minister in the priest's office, and the anointing oil, and sweet incense for the holy place, according to all that I have communed with thee, command, commanded thee, shall they do. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verify my, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy for you. Every one that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with a finger of God. So, as I said, this is a short chapter, and it deals with uh, who he's going to get to do these uh, this work, and, and, and actually just basically talking about who he's going to get to supervise this work. And God speaks to Moses in, in verse 1, and in verse uh, 
it says in verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, and in verse through, uh, 2 through 5 says, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uriah, the son of her, her, her of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to devise cunning works, to work in gold and in silver and in brass, and in cutting of stones to set them in carving of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. So God called by name. He actually called this man out, Beelzelah. And, uh, and that means uh, in the shadow of God. Now, he was, he was the son of Uriah, who was the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And Judah, of course, means blessed. He was probably the grandson of the Hur that helped Aaron to hold up Moses' hands uh, to defeat the Amalekites. So God filled uh, Bezalel with wisdom uh, to lead the construction, to supervise uh, the construction of the tabernacle and all of the furnishings, everything, all the furniture, all the furnishings that was in it, and even to the cl claws and the, uh, by the priests and also the claws and, and the curtains and everything that hung down around and inside the, uh, the temple. Now, he was smart. Uh, he was knowledgeable, he was wise, and he was a skilled craftsman he, he, in all in all things. It was all given to him by God. God said by all the wisdom and stuff that I have given them, all the, and all the wise heart that I have given. So uh, he could do it all. He could work in gold, he could work in silver, he could work in brass. Uh, he could cut stone and set the stone. He could carve wood. Uh, he could do anything that needed to be done. Of course, he supervised that. It was a bigger job than one man could do, but he supervised that. Uh, so in verse 6, it says, uh, And behold, I have given with him Aholiab, the son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan. And in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted, I have put wisdom, that they may make all that I have commanded thee. So God gave... Uh, Bezalel, an assistant uh, named uh, uh, Aholiab, and his name means the tent of the father, which which probably or maybe be, maybe be a reference to the tabernacle itself, uh, which means tent. <clears throat> now he was of the tribe of Jan Dan, <coughs> and Dan means to judge. But they had at their disposal all all of the wise-hearted uh, that had wisdom put there by God, of course, to help build all that God had said. And we need to remember that God did do that. He put all, he gave them all the wisdom. He gave them all the ability to do the things that they needed to do. Verses 7 through 11 says, The tabernacle of the congregation and the ark of the testimony and the mercy seat that is thereupon, and all the furniture of the tabernacle and the table and his furniture and the pure candlestick with all his furniture and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all his furniture, and his labor in his foot, and the cloths of service, and the holy garments for Aaron the priest, and the garments of his sons to minister in the priest's office, and the anointing oil and sweet incense for the holy place, according to all that I have commanded thee, shall they do. So he listed all this, that that needs to be made. Uh, number one was the tabernacle itself, which was the, the tent and the and the, the outer court and the inner court, the holy the holy place and the most holy place, or the holy of holies. Uh, number two, he, he lists the Ark of the Testimony, or the Ark of the Covenant. And three, then he lists the mercy seat, which is the lid uh, for the Ark. Number four, was all the furniture and all the things within the tabernacle. Uh, five, the table, uh, the showbread of the showbread, and the vessels or, or the, the tools they used to to work on that uh, showbread with, and then the six was the candlestick of pure gold, the golden candlestick, the lamp stand, and seven was the altar of incense, which we just which we just uh, read about in the last chapter, and six was the brazen altar, which is what they sacrificed everything on. Nine was the laver and his foot, which we just read about uh, also which the priests were to wash in before they came into the, uh, into the temple, or they would, so they would die not, the Bible says, or they would not have a plague on them. And tenth was the cloth of service, and that would be all the curtains of the tabernacle, uh, 
all the all the curtains that went around it and the curtains that that cover the uh, inner the inner court uh, where the holy place and the most holy was, and then the curtains that separated the holy and the most holy place. Eleven was the holy garments for the priest to wear. That would have been what Aaron wore with with the. Uh, uh, the ephod and the curious girdle of the ephod and the robes and, and every and the mitre and everything at, at at Aaron wore and then the stuff that also that his sons wore to minister to God and twelve was the anointing oil and we talked about that last time of, of the anointing oil that he used and, and how they were to use it after the art of the apothecary or to mix it and then and took hold of all the uh, different uh, in, uh, spices and, and herbs and stuff that they were to use. And the last thing was the sweet incense, which was very similar to the uh, anointing oil where they gave the composition of it and how to make it. Verses 12 through 17 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbaths you shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. You shall keep the Sabbath there, uh, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely Put to death, for whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. So God tells Moses, he tells him to tell the people of Israel that verily, and that's truly, that they will, that they should, that they need to, they have to keep the Sabbath. And Sabbath actually means rest or, or an intermission, a, a break between something. And God says that the Sabbath is a sign. It's a sign that he has given them. And we know that the Bible says that the Jews require a sign or they seeketh after a sign. Now it is a sign, he says, throughout your generations, uh, showing that the Lord is God and, and that he sanctified or he, got, he set apart the people. He made a difference between the people of Israel and the other nations. Now, just as God created the world in six days and rested on the Sabbath, the Jews were to work six and then rest on the Sabbath. The Sabbath for Israel was a, a Saturday. It was from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday. Now, we usually uh, meet on Sunday. We, we normally do a Sunday uh, thing, uh, worship service, and uh, that's because we read in the Bible where the uh, apostles on the uh, met on the first day of the week. Actually, Acts 20, uh, chapter 20, verse 7 says, And on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. Now, God didn't need the rest. He didn't need the rest. But he knew that humans would need the rest. He knew that we needed the rest. Verse 18 says, uh, and he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. So he gave Moses the, the Ten Commandments after he, had, uh, after he had told him all they needed to know, all of, and he gave it to him on the two tables of stone, and they were written with the finger of God, just as the Ten Commandments were of God. We believe that the whole Bible, the whole KJV Bible is inspired. It's, it's given by inspiration of God and that it's profitable for us. Now, before, uh, when God actually told them here about the, the, uh, uh, the Sabbath, he had not uh, given them the Ten Commandments yet. Uh, but, now he, uh, but now he has given them the Ten Commandments and uh, they are the finger of God. And he... Uh, he wrote it on the finger of God just to, just to put it in stone, and that's where we get the expression uh, written in stone. It's not written in stone, or it is written in stone, because God did literally write this in stone. He did write with his finger on the tables and the tablets of stone, and then they were put after the, after the ark and everything was made, and the most holy and the holies of holies was made, and the ark was put within the holies of holies. Then he put 
the uh, he put the tables of stone into uh, that ark along with uh, some uh, manna that he had fed them with in the wilderness. And then after a while, he put the uh, the uh, also the uh, rod of Aaron that budded when the uh, when it, when some of the men act like they were as good as uh, Aaron and and Moses and and. Moses was showing that God had chosen Aaron and his sons to be priests. He had uh, he had Moses, I mean rather Aaron's staff, and that it budded and almond buds and almonds came out on there, and God put it inside there. But as I was saying before, uh, they did not have the Ten Commandments, but there still had been uh, some references to uh, the the, uh, the Sabbath because uh, God would have them collect the manna on six days, and then there would be none there on the seventh so they knew uh, they knew uh, not to or they were supposed to know not to go look for that on the Sabbath but some did some still went to look for it and God uh, sorry about that and God uh, uh, gave them the Ten Commandments he included that in the Ten Commandments uh, well thank you for for listening and thank you for paying attention and uh, hopefully we'll be back to church again maybe uh, not this Sunday, but possibly, possibly the Sunday coming up. And uh, again, thank you for paying attention. Thank you for watching the videos, and remember to share them with your friends. We want we want to get everyone to know about the Word of God and what God has for you. And uh, uh, we want we want to get God's blessing on us. So we we on us. So we need to know what it is that we should do to get God's blessing. Again, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, and let's uh, close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all things. We thank you for the many, many blessings you bestow upon us and, and, and just ask that you would bless us, Lord. Give us the desire to learn and study about you, Lord, and, 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 uh, and just to know all that we can to know about you, Lord, so that we might know how to please you in some way. And we'll thank you for it, Lord. We'll give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor, Lord. And again, we thank you for all that you've done for us and what you will do for us. In Jesus' name we do pray, and amen.